Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Dayan Chita. We're going to do a little mind training uh, exercise again for me, my mind training exercise, and I'm going to share my uh, an image. All right, what is this drawing of? Uh, if you say a duck, I will hit you 30 times. If you say a rabbit, I will hit you 30 times. All right, if you say it's not a duck or a rabbit, but instead cats, I will uh, roll my eyes and, and gro groan inwardly. All right, so an, an image like this was first created by a, a psychologist named Joseph Jastrow, who, uh, according to Wikipedia, uh, believed that what you saw in the image depended upon your emotional state at the time. So more recently, uh, some psychologists found that people who can switch easily between the duck and the rabbit can find, on average, five rather than just two creative uses for everyday everyday items, such as paper clips. So I, I must be able to find at least five creative uses for a paper clip because I can switch back and forth fairly easily. And I first encountered it in, in Ludwig Wittgenstein's Philosophical Investigations, where it illustrates his distinction between seeing that and seeing as. So, so what is it again? A duck? A rabbit? Uh, what do I see? when I look at this. Right. So this image is posted uh, over the desk in my office. I, I use the image as a mnemonic uh, for some Zen mind training. So we know that mindfulness uh, isn't just awareness, but mindfulness with clear comprehension, remembering, minding, and reminding. And the duck rabbit illustration works as a mindfulness tool for me. It's not just smriti, but smriti sampranjana. Right? Vigilant minding with a purpose. And the purpose is for us to keep remembering skillful approaches to the world. So what does it remind me? Well, first, it reminds me that in the words uh, of, of the great Bodhisattva Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, you're going to find that many of the truths we cling to depend greatly on our own point of view. We all have a point of view that we instinctively cling to for some uh, metaphysical comfort. Now, according to the Dutataka Sutta on the corruptions of mind, uh, for the Buddha, attachment to views is a sign of illusion and conceit and leads to pointless arguments, uh, uh, while those unattached from views might still enter debates but feel no need to take sides. And according to the Magandiya Sutta, uh, I'm quoting, for one detached from perception, there are no knots. For one liberated by wisdom, there are no delusions. But those who have grasped perceptions and views wander in the world creating fr friction. Uh, in another translation, it's stirring up strife. So basically, people attached to their views go around making trouble for everyone, including themselves. So the first reminder is that my views are just views and not to get too attached to them. I'm not seeing the, that the world is some particular way, only seeing the world as some particular way at a given time. As it says in the Dhammapada, right, our mind makes our world. And those views I have are just stories my mind tells about the world, some more skillful than others. So that's something we should always be mindful of but it's very easy to forget, hence, hence the drawing, I keep it posted. It's more generally a good reminder that not only do we each have different perspectives, but those perspectives also have reasons and conditions that have created them, just as ducks and rabbits have. That doesn't mean they're all equally true or false or skillful or unskillful, only that clinging to them cuts us off from other people. Not clinging to views, opens us up to those other perspectives. We could call it following Shantideva, exchanging self for other, uh, cultivating the virtue of equanimity, where we see ourselves as equally, see others as equally valuable as ourselves. So why does that matter? It, it matters most perhaps when inter interacting with other people. I, I work as an academic librarian and many of my interactions are research consultations, helping students with research projects. My role isn't to impose my perspective on that of students. 
but to help them realize their own projects with the tools we have available. And I need to be able to shift into their perspective. That's partly why I keep it as a reminder of my desk at work. So exchanging self for others is a, a grandiose way of putting what librarians call the reference interview. So library patrons asking for help uh, often don't ask for what they really need, but for, for what they think librarians can provide. So one job of the librarian is to, to suspend judgment, suspend views for a while, to ask questions to get at the real information need, a minor version of exchanging self for other. Also, the students I work with are usually very different from me, different age, gender, ethnicity, nationality, class, different cultural and social assumptions and views they may or may not cling to. But that's a microcosm of all of our interactions with people in the world. Most people are different from us, often in significant ways. But underneath, we share something. In Zen, we say it's our Buddha nature. And we see that more easily once we stop clinging to views and going through the world making trouble. So if we don't cling to views, we're more open to, our, to others, to uh, exchange ourselves for others, to understand their perspectives. It's not a literal exchange, obviously, not Freaky Friday, but one of sympathy, imagination. What's it like to be that person? For that matter, what's it like to be me? What's it like not to be me? Can I even answer that question? It also doesn't mean that we necessarily approve of those others. I can understand that someone filled with hate and anger is suffering. I can wish them free of that suffering uh, without in the least approving their hate and anger. I've experienced hate and anger before, and that's enough for sympathy and imagination. I've experienced love and fear and suffering. So this illustration is a reminder to me that we should always work to reduce our attachment to views, to, to, to free ourselves and others from suffering, to learn to shift perspectives easily and often rather than cling to the one that comforts us the most. One way to do that is through constant reminders. Uh, everyone has views and perspectives. It's possible to detach from ours, which makes it more likely we're able to experience both the difference of others and their own Buddha nature, to see their suffering as our own. So that's what I see when I look at this image. I see it as a reminder that our mind makes our world, uh, that our beliefs are often only true from a certain point of view, ours, and that detaching from them opens us up to the possibility of exchanging self and other, of cultivating equanimity. It's not just a duck rabbit or a rabbit duck or cats. It is a reminder for awakening. And thank you 